It's a, it's a mix of companies. I mean, let's start off with Pepsi. Yes. And some would argue that maybe the valuation uh, relative to itself is pretty high at this point. Well, I call it the ironic trade. Okay. Um, because if you think about Pepsi, they don't make anything really healthy. Um, and we talk about how millennials want healthier snacks and everything else. Um, and they, you know, they beat, core, their quarter earnings were very good. They beat estimates. Yeah. And it's because of Frito-Lay. And who would guess, you know, you think about chips, and you think about things that are very unhealthy as really driving their market right now. Um, and I think, you know, if you look at them from a North America standpoint, that's where a lot of their growth is coming from. And they're doing a lot of marketing there, too. So I think that trend is going to continue. And I think it's a trend that no one really expected. Mm -hmm. What do you think is driving that trend towards uh, crunchies and, and the ability for consumer staples companies in general to raise price or keep price firm? Yeah, I think that's, it's hard to do that in this environment, too. But I just think it's that I think Americans have a sweet tooth and it's something that gets discounted because we have this you know, mirage of that we like health food. And it's actually not true. Mm -hmm. it's, it's the carbs. It's not necessarily sweet. And if, if you tried to do the carb-free diet and when you need a snack and, and everything that you want that, that is a snack, you can't have. There's one thing that they tell you you can have and, and you have three of them. It's like I'm never having any pork rinds. You can't have that. <laughs> but if you want some kind of toes... Fritos, Cheetos, Tostitos, <laughs> to, they're all Pepsi, and, and eventually you do break down, typically, I think, don't you? If you need a, you need a snack, you, you need, you can't eat down. meat, just constant, <laughs> and now it's not even going to be meat. Beyond It'll be meat. Beyond meat. Be <laughs> <laughs> Have you thought of pain capital, no pain, no, no gain? gain? Have you, is that, have you used that as a... a Joe, that is the name of our radio show, so I appreciate okay, promoting good. it right. every Saturday I, I, on WABC. It's obvious. <laughs> but, uh, but, do, but do you think, you think that people are always going to have unhealthy chips That's and sodas and things? Anything in moderation, though, Andrew. I mean, I think it's one of those things that's just been unexpected, right? right. So I think the world kind of thought that, well, in America, we don't eat that yeah, way anymore, true. and it's just untrue. And I think the, the, the earnings speak to that, and I think the fact they're going to continue to market to that means it's still a good buy in the short term. Right. Kale chips. You, you know what I Kale had chip. recently? Ooh. No. That are actually really no. good. Do you, know, do you, know, you ever have a Quest bar? Do you know what a Quest bar is? Yeah. Oh right? Okay. You know, I know, but Quest is now making potato chips. Huh. i got to so try that, then. They're like, are they potatoes? <laughs> I don't they're know. Beyond they're beyond potatoes. Like, they're, they're called protein <laughs> chips. They're called protein chips, and they taste like potato chips. They're really good. They get oh. barbecue See, what, chips. This there is a there's a, fairness, there's a Quest need bar is like that. a Snickers bar for millennials. It's still pretty unhealthy if you look at all the sugar and everything else. I think it has stevia in it. Stevia, exactly. Is stevia right. really healthy? Yeah, who knows? Do you want a chemical sure. sweetener? Anyway, let's move yeah. on. This is the mystery chart. J.P. Morgan. J.P. Morgan. Okay, I came on the show last time I talked about J.P. Morgan when we had the inverted yield curve. Uh -huh. Everyone was not feeling very bullish about it, um, and they still made money on their net interest margin. And I think as the economy continues to pick up, um, I think interest rates will rise, and that will be great for the stock as well, which is already doing well. So I think banks in general look good here. It's, uh, has it proven itself based on the last earnings that it's really uh, above the rest of its peers in terms of execution and the ability to navigate this flat yield curve environment? Yes, I mean, and the yield curve is, I mean, it is flat, but remember, interest rates were hiked four times last year. And, you know, banks are a little slow to raise their rates, uh, you know, the way the Fed did. So they're still able to make money in there. And I do think that, again, as the economy picks up this year, if you get a little bit more of a uh, steep yield curve, they're going to make even more money on that. And, you know, the price of earnings right now is just really attractive at 12 times forward earnings. So, Kinder Morgan's your last uh, pick here for us. Why, why go pipelines as opposed to... An EMP company or an integrated? Um, I think because they're really a dominant in the space of actually owning the pipelines. And as we get more production coming from the U.S., which we're really dominating in that space now, uh, you know, they're going to be one of the ones that has the spare capacity. They have another $5.7 in project coming up. And I love the cash flow. Right? You're getting a 5% yield. They're going to increase that another 25% next year. Um, and Richard Kinder, who owns the company or owns a large portion of the company, he just bought another like 73 million shares since mm. April. So you know, a lot of inside buying as well is a really optimistic view for the company.